The organizers of the 2018 GT Open Indoor Road Series would like to thank the official sponsors for their generosity. The Commune, Distrust and Luxembourg, let's make it happen for their outstanding support. Food supplied by Vina Sapporo, Ristorante Pizzeria and the Lege. Transportation provided by David Chandelier, our official hotels, Lodi and Park Hotel. The technical support provided by Electro Tech. Live stream handled by Vienna Raw. Gift bags provided by KK Archery. Second chance pricing by Bayern, Navex, Stanislavski and Brinnerwin. We are now here at the first stage in the World Cup Series at the GT Open in Luxembourg, Strassen. In a few minutes we will start with the compound women final matches. After that we will follow with the compound men and recap women and men matches. For the first match we will see Tanya Janssen against Cassidy Cox from the USA. We already shot our qualification and final rounds. And now waiting, who will win the first World Cup Series stage in Strassen? And maybe will have their first points for the World Cup final in Las Vegas. against Cassidy Cox. Tanya Jensen shot 588 in qualification round and got the fourth place. She won the quarterfinal against um, Toya, uh, Marcella Tonioli and won the uh, quarterfinal against Toya Allison. No, she lost the quarterfinal against Toya Allison. So Toya gonna be in the gold final match and Tanya Jensen is the bronze final match. She shot a very strong qualification. And then we have on Tiger 2, Cassidy Cox. She shot 592, so five points more than Tanya and she lost against the women from Russia, Victoria Balsanova with 143 points. So we will see what happens now. Both girls can shoot high scores. Both shoot Matthews. So we're gonna see who will take the medal or the fourth place at home. Tanya Jensen, she is 23 years old, she is world rank number 11, so that's a strong opponent for Casey Cox, who is 20 years old, she is 49th place on the world ranking. That's a 10 for Cassidy Cox. 
strong way to start the match. It's gonna get a little bit of pressure on Tanya. I think that's all set time for ah. Tanya. Oh, no, looks like very close. And a nine for Cassidy. So both archers shoot Matthew bows. Cassidy shoots Eastern arrows, and Tanya shoots the Carbon Express yeah. Inner arrows. That's a strong inside out then for Tanya. So nineteen nineteen. And a ten for Cassidy. Yeah. Nine for Tanya. Nine. That's a good set to begin for Cassidy. Yeah, it's better when you start with a strong first end because you get a bit of pressure on the other archer. And you know that you the start is the hardest, you think? Yeah, I think that's the biggest pressure what you get, that's the first shot in your match. You have time to practice behind the scenes, but the lightning is... Uh, you have a difference between the lightnings and you don't have the publicity, the people who are watching you, the cameras and everything. So I think the first three arrows are the hardest one and maybe the last three when you know if you have to shoot a 10 or if you can be a bit of, uh, if you can be a bit relaxed when you know you're leading. Yeah, but it's also during the girls pulling their bows, it's getting that quiet in the range. That also makes some pressure on. Yeah, they know everyone is just watching them. Cassidy is leading because of that. Tanya Jensen st starts shooting. That's a good 10 for Tanya. That's a good response when you start and then shooting a 10. It was a bit long. Nine, so we have 10 for Tanya, 9 for Cassidy. And another 10 for Tanya. She's making strong shots. Looks like she wants definitely to get some leading back for herself. Yeah. And it's a 9 for Cassidy. And so that's a 29, maybe a 30. We will see what's the answer from Cassidy. Ten. That's a 10. So it looks like now girls having the same score. It's getting a bit hot inside here. Yeah. And as you see, when you look at the final brackets, Tanya can shoot very, very strong. She won her first match with 147 points, the second with 149, 147, and again 147. So three nines in a match, that's a very good score. Definitely. And Cassidy, she shot 145, and then 148 against Jennifer Wenzel. And then she had to shoot, make a shoot-off against Lena Maya de Grenis from Belgium in the uh, fourth final. She both shot 146 arrows and th she won nine against, uh, 10 against 9. And in the quarterfinal she lost against Victoria Balsanova with 143 points. So the average from Tanya is a bit higher than from Cassidy, but 
in the finals, everything is new and you can win if you just be there, focus on your shooting and not focus on what's happening around you. So we have 58 to 57 for Tanya. So she shot three tenths, perfect 30. That's a good way to get a more confidence in your own shooting. Cassidy starts shooting. That's a 10. I think that's a nine. Uh, yeah, looks like girls all the time fighting with the one point difference with each other. Yeah. They are both definitely really strong archers. Yeah. They just for sure need some time to get on track. Yeah. Ten. And again, ten. ten for Cassidy. I think now it's more the mental game fight between them two. Yeah. Both can shoot. Both win medals, Seven. got nice scores indoor and outdoor. It's just that you can focus on your own shooting, that your technique and you are in your own flow, just shooting and doing everything you can. And another 10, so 30 Seven. points for Cassidy. That was a nine for Tanya, so again, Cassidy seems like she took the leading for the match. Yeah, but this year we definitely have really high level archers on this tournament. Yeah, we have the sixth GT Open, and it's the first time that GT Open is a part of the World Indoor, Indoor World Series. And last year we also had people with a high level. We had um, Sarah Puyles was there yes, uh, last year, Frederick Houston, a recurve archer. But this year there are even more people from Europe but also from America. Braden Galantin, who coaches Tanya, is here. So it's a very, very high tournament with high quality archers. Yeah, but this year is also a higher number of, let's say, top 100 world-ranked archers. That's really good time for the tournament. Yeah. And that's a 10 for Tanya. She looks now more confident, I think. And a 10 for Cassidy. Ten for Cassidy. Looks like now Cassidy got some advantage of two points, so and it's a ten. ten. So when Cassidy shoots a ten, she has a two point advantage above Tanya and it's in maybe. nine, maybe ten. For the last set it's always two. It's always good to have some advantage, even of one point for self-confidence. Yeah, yeah. But we see both archers can shoot a 30. Both are strong women and both want to win the bronze medal. Yeah. Both shooting really nice technique. Also, they for sure have the best equipment. That's really good. I think it's have to be interesting the last set, especially we have small difference in points. So yeah. maybe difficult to say now who can win this match. Yeah. 
you can't take it easy as an archer. You just have to look on yourself and hopefully shoot a dirty because that's the only way to save your win. <laughs> oh, yes. Judges in CBS. She was really the first edition of GT Open in Compound Woman. Winning the first edition and now being a line judge for the Compound Women. <laughs> yes. So Tanya Jensen is starting. And that's a strong beginning with a 10. It. And we see um, that Tanya Jensen shot a 29 last end, and Cassidy Cox also 29, so they just have one point. And so it's a 10 for Cassidy. Uh, oh. So I think we just have to wait what the judges will say when they enter the scores and the scorecard. And a 10. Seven. So. She's making it serious. She has a good support behind of Brad and Jelentin. She sounds quite happy with her shooting. Yeah. And? Nine, also 10. Okay, that's getting difficult. That's, I think, 10, ten. so a okay. perfect 30 point. At her last, and I think she uh, she might be happy yep. because she couldn't do it any better. Now it's on Cassidy how she will shoot. Oh, that's definitely that's a nine. nine. Yeah. So maybe we will have a shoot off, uh, or Tanya win the bronze medal match. Yeah. We will see what the judge at the target will say. But the boy shot really well. You Tanya Jensen won. So she made a very, very good shot. With a perfect 30 Great. on her last end. That's the way how you want to end a match. Yeah. That's the perfect thing. When you know, okay, I shot a 30, I can't even do it any better. Yeah. Even she were by one point behind, she took her advantage with a perfect score. Awesome. That's really good. Yeah. That's what can do experienced archers. Yeah. Congratulations to Tanya Jensen with her bronze medal on the first indoor world series on 6GT Open. So I think we're gonna see her hopefully in Vegas for the World Cup final. I will remember to qualify for the World Cup final. They take two of the best results from all tournaments you shot in indoor series. So she for sure still have chances to win or get some high rank on the NIM World Cup as well as Rome and Vegas. So I think there is a good chances that she can go into the finals. She's definitely the good archer, so. Yeah. And in a few minutes, we will start with the gold medal match for the compound women. We have on target one, Toya Ellison. And on target number two, Victoria Balsanova. The volunteers prepare the field and now our archers can enter the final field. a really strong match by Toya and Victoria. They shot a quite similar score at the qualification round. We have on target one Toya Allison with 586. She ranked 9 at the qualification. 
and Victoria Balsanova with 587, one point higher, and the sixth place at the qualification. And when we look at the finals, we see in the 16th final, Toya won against Christina Heigenhauser from Germany with 148 points. Then against uh, Saniva Lieslevant with 146. Then 146 points against Sarah Priels. And she won the match against Tanya Jensen with a strong 149 points. But she didn't have it easy. She had two shootouts to come into the final. So that's when she's really strong mentally. I think it's very difficult. Also, you get more confident when you shoot 149 yeah. in your quarterfinals. So that's a nine, nine that's for Victoria. Victoria is also definitely a very experienced archer. Nine. And also a nine for Toya. And uh, inside out ten. Ten for Toya Allison, so we are twenty nine uh, nineteen nineteen. And a good finish for ten. Victoria. So maybe we will have a tie, or Victoria will lead the first and ten. And a ten. So Victoria shot also really well during her way into the gold final. She won against Bridget Francois with 143. Then she won her another match against Hannah Brown with the same score of 143. And against Jen Meissner with 145 points. And let's see what will she show because I think she has a bit lower average than Toya, where still 145 is quite good result. Yeah, and also when you look at the age, Toya is quite younger than Victoria, but she has he has a high, she has a higher world ranking. She is 12 at the Compound Women World Ranking, and Victoria is 24th. So. I think two year is more conf So I think we have to see and maybe don't say for sure. Maybe she's going to take the chance to get back to the international stages. And a nice 10 for Victoria. So we have 10 for Toya at the moment. So 39 points and 48 for Victoria Balsanova. It was a nice shot from Toya. She looked very confident. And it's 20 for Toya and 19 points for Victoria. Well, that's also a good shot. So 29 for Victoria. There is not many archer who is still shooting with the release, which is Victoria. I think... Mostly the Russian national team archers yeah. who use this release. It's there are some from um, USA, 
and Turkey. And Turkey, who also uses this, but the most of them don't use the re release anymore. Well, when she was on the top in 2011, I think that release was really popular. Now there is many who switch to the trigger releases or finger releases, right? Yeah. So now we have 59 for Toya Ellison and 58 for Victoria Balsanova. Is shooting Hoyt and Victoria, I think that's Botek. She's and not happy with nine. her shot. <laughs> She's definitely not happy. But you see, when you look at the target face, it's like the same hole or next to the holes than before. So maybe she is make she's doing <laughs> the same mistake every end. And maybe, maybe 10. Maybe 10. So we have 27 for Victoria Balsanova, maybe 28. And nine, and nine for Toya Allison. So 28 or 29 for Toya Allison. That's two points leading for her. And After three ends, that's good. Yeah. And you see, when you look, take a look at the target face from Toya, her arrows are very close to the center. Even when it's a nine, it's in the recurve ten ring. But when Victoria shuts a nine, it's quite outside the ten. So yeah. you see her average. As you see in the average, she just shoot higher scores and is more confident and more stable in the way she shoots. We have two fractional arrows on each side, so let's see what happens with those two arrows. Let's hear a little applause for Victoria Pazanova. Come on, a little bit of applause. So it seems like Toya got another point for her, so it's 85 to 87 for Toya. Yeah. Victoria starts shooting, um, that's a clear 10. I think it's the first 10 on the top target face. Yeah. Nine. That was a strong shot, but it's a 9 for Toya. Looks like Victoria get back together and trying to get her leading back maybe. Everything is possible. You just have two centimeters, um, that's a 10. And on 80 meters, yeah, you can shoot nines very often. Ten. So nine she's getting back and Toya shots a nine, maybe 10. Let's now get a bit difficult situation for Toya as could be she lost her advantage of two points. Victoria finished with maybe 30. 
what would be good for her. And that's a clear 10. So Jolia, don't give up. She's fighting and want to lead more than just for one point in the match. We will see what the judges will say. Maybe we will have some changes. At Tanya the was shaking her head at yes, so looks like Toya got her 10. So. So maybe she is now leading two points. Yes, it's confirmed. So Toya Allison, she's, she got 9, 10, 10. So 116 points. And Victoria Balsanova, she shot a perfect 30. With, and now she got 115 points. So Toya is leading with, by one point. And now we're going to start with the last end of our gold medal match here at the 6th GT Open Indoor World Series. Both archers are coached by their teammate. teammates. Teammates, normally Brady Ellison, Coaches her, but he is not at the GT Open. So her teammate of Slovenia, I think he is. Coaches her. And now Victoria starts the last end of the gold medal match. Archers are fighting for one and a half thousand no. euros from organization of GT Open. So that's also quite big money. They have maybe reason to worry as yeah. well as for getting some points to have higher chance to go into the World Cup final. Yeah. So at the moment two years leading by two points. And Victoria nine. shot a nine. So it's not really good to start now with two nines. And you don't want to end your match with two nines. Or maybe three, or she gonna take a ten for the last arrow. Nine. And a nine for Toya Ellison. So Toya is still leading by two points. No. And she shot a ten. Seven. So if Victoria wants to win, Toya would need to shoot now an 8 for a shoot-off. Everything can happen. But yes, but Toya showed us high yeah. level and good confidence in herself. And she is the winner of the 6th GT Open of the first indoor series tournament. And she's getting already 250 points into her pocket to go maybe in the World Cup final. And as we see, she, Julia shot a strong match. She started with a 29, 30, 28, 29, and for the last end again a 29. So she did some strong shots, but I think she can do it even better. She but was all the time very close to the 10, so yeah, yeah. it's good. So 145 is a good score, and she definitely wins the gold medal. So the next match will be between men's for the bronze medal. And there we will see the Sergio Pagni and Peter Elzinga. Both archers are very experienced, a uh, long time on the international competing area and they both are really, really good in indoor. They both shot, as I saw before, 150, right? 
Sergio shot in his matches 148, 147, 146, and lost with 147. Yeah, and Peter Elzinger, he shot 596 in the qualification round and ranked second. He won his 16th final with one with the 150 points, and that's not easy at all. After that, he shot 149, 148, and then he lost the match against Stefan Hansen, who was shoot in the gold medal match with 146 points. So I think. He, he is disappointed about his last match because he can shoot even better. But we know now that Peter Elzinger can definitely shoot 150 in his match. And Sergio for sure can show us a high shooting. Peter Elzinger! When you look at the average, on the matches, you see that Peter Elzinger shot a higher score, and even in the qualification, Peter Elzinger shot one point more than Sergio Pani, but one point, you can easily drop one point, so we will see what this match will bring. Yeah, but also as we see from the girls that average in match in the in front of cameras is a bit lower compared to the matches where we shot all on the same shooting line without so many cameras, photographers, so everything can happen. So let's see what will come out of this. And both archers are in the um, top 20 world ranking, Peter Elzinger, he's on the 14th place, and Sergio Pani, he's on the 10th place. Ten. So I think that's gonna be a strong match for both men. Peter Elzinger starts with a strong 10. It's probably wow. 9 for Pani. Ten. Elzinger shots again a 10, so 20 points for him. And 18 points. Ten. Oh, looks like ten, 19 points for Sergio. In the men category especially, one point can make really huge Nine. difference. And both archers shot 29, 29. That's good for Sergio, who started with a nine. And let's see what will come out. Now, unfortunately, in this match, we won't see another 150 points, but maybe 149 is still possible for both of them. Points the number two of the qualification round. In the quarterfinals, he won against Kevin Bullion and in the semi Both archers have many experiences. Sergio Pani shoots Hoyt for years and also Eastern Arrows. Um, Peter Elzinger, he is shooting his prime ball and also shooting and Eastern Arrows. And we see Sergio Pani, he shot 28, so the judge said the second arrow wasn't a 10, it was a 9. So Peter Elzinger is leading by one point. And it's a strong 10 from Sergio. Let's see if he can get his position back, maybe. 10. And 10 for Peter. Ten. 
Ten. That's a strong ten for Sergio. I think it's inside out. So he definitely find the middle of the target face. Ten. Also, Peter did a strong shot. I think they both are now in their flow. They are making very good shots. And also, Sergio ten. shot again a ten. That's a perfect full point from Sergio. It's good to have such a score after 28. Oh, and maybe Peter Elzinger opened maybe the door for Sergio. There's always chance. We have a pretty tight match here. Both athletes scoring 58 points after the first two ends. So it's officially confirmed by Judge that we have again the same score by both archers. They both shot 58-58 and we have still three sets to go. Anything can happen. As you see, Sergio Pani, he shoots um, the same kind of release like Victoria Balsanova, the match before. Like we have some small delay with the system. Now archers can go on. Because they are Thai, Peter Eltinger starts shooting. And that was very close. I think it's a bit surprised. Ten. That's the worst thing. When you think you mentally shot a 10, everything was good and the error isn't in the middle, you're wondering and don't know what happened. But now he ten. made a quite good shot. He shot ten. a 10. And it's difficult, especially in the match where every error is counting like the last. It's Ten. very important to be sure and confident in yourself, but also that it's mirroring on your result. And so that Ten. was a fast shot from Peter, so yeah. he had 29 points. And Sergio needs a 10 to get advantage. And, and he, he got it. That's another perfect score by Sergio. So it's his... Second 30, so Sergio got 88 points, Peter Elzinger got 87 points. It's a very close match, so no one gives up, everyone wants to win the bronze medal match. When you are in the gold medal match, you're not even happy when you lose it, but you even get a silver medal. But when you lose the bronze medal match, Nobody likes it because you don't get a medal, you get less prize money and you lost your last match and you lost your last end, the match before. Yeah. So that's a bad way to, to end a tournament. Yeah, it's twice lost match, that's not so good. But that's sport, we cannot change it unfortunately.
That's a turn for Peter Elsinger. I really like how colorful is ball of Sergio. He's like a sunshine on the field. With yeah. His yellow strings. And, and the uh, shot pants. Peter need to should know a bit better than he. And again did nine. last shot. That's not so good for him. He can shoot better and he knows it. He's shaking his hand. He don't know what's yeah. happening because um, he can shoot 150. And when you know you can shoot it, but you see you're dropping the points every end, that's frustrating. But when you're shooting a match, you have to keep your head up ten. and looking forward. And he did it. He shot a 10 as the last arrow. So 29 points for Peter Elsinger. Yeah, but also all the best archers are and not the robo machines, so it's difficult to stay on the race and shoot only tens. Yeah. But Peter shot 29 points and Sergio Pani again another uh, and with 30 points. So we have 180 points for Sergio Pani and 116 for Peter Elsinger. I think that will be very difficult for Peter to get some advantage back because Sergio can be like a shark to hold all his points and he just need to work now his shots as he did before. He shot three thirties in a row, that's really good. And when you're into it, when you're in your flow, that's much more easier for you to shoot another 30 than when you're unconfident, shot nines before, and uh, when you are not happy with yourself. So we will see what Peter Elsinger will do if he keep his mind focused on his shooting, and hopefully he don't think of his old errors. So he ten. does a 10, he shots a 10. But he didn't, he don't even look quite happy. Ten. Well, because now his average shows that he can shoot maximum 146, what is lowest yeah. from the score he shot before, where he ten. was able to shoot even 150. And but again another 10. And now he just have to wait that Sergio makes a mistake. And that's the problem. You can't. It's not enough when he now shoots a 30. You just have to wait. Hopefully for him, Sergio shoots a nine or an eight. Ten. He did the best job he could do. He shot a 30, so 146 points for him. A good way to end the bronze medal match. But Sergio shot another 30, so 148 points, and he only dropped two points in the first end, so it's a very, very good score. I think he is very happy. He won the bronze medal match at the first stage of the Indoor World Series at the GT Open in Luxembourg. So. He collected his first points for the World Cup final in Las Vegas in 2019. And he was a lucky dog ride in the Vegas a few years ago with Sergio. And he won them. Yeah, that's really, really cool. And he showed us now how to shoot four turtles in a row after maybe not the best beginning. That's nice, but Peter also showed us with the last set, even when you cannot get advantage, you still have to show your best. He finished with a perfect 30. Unfortunately, it was not enough on this level, but they both shot really nice. Congratulations for both of them. Yeah. And now we're gonna start the gold medal match for the compound men here at the first stage of the Indoor World Series, the sixth GT Open in Luxembourg, Strassen. Now, please welcome the competitors to the field of play for the men's compound gold medal match. And 
we have very young archers on the shooting line that Stefan Hansen and Domagoj Buden, both of them shot really, really good the qualification Domagoj round. Domagoj Buden! Domagoj is only 21 years old. He shoots on and target number one. Stefan Hansen! Stefan Hansen is 23 years old and shoots on target number two. Uh, Domagoj is number 11 in the world ranking and Stefan is number two. But Domagoj shot really, really great score in the past matches. He won against Brad and again with 148 with 148 against Sergio Pani, then with 149 against Reginald Kuhls, and with 148 against Jens Hasbach. So when you look at the error average from the matches, you see that both archers are very close. Stefan Hansen shot um, 148 in his 16th final, 150 in his 18th final, but he has to shoot a shoot off, and then he shot 149 in the quarter final, uh, in the eighth fourth final, and uh, 148 in the quarter final. So both archers can shoot very high scores. And we have Nine. 19 points for Domagoj. And 20 points for Stefan Hansen. He's a bit low. Ten. And a 10 for Domagal Buden, so 29 points. And another 10 for Stefan Hansen, so 30 points for Stefan Hansen. He is now leading by one point. And maybe that's the one point who will... Um, Let me introduce Stefan Hansen to you. He that's the one point who will um, tell us who win the match, because the both can shoot very, very and high scores. And you can't shoot too many nines. One nine finals, is maybe one nine Barbara. too much. In the quarterfinals, he won against Mike Schlosser in a pretty tight match. And Looks like the then then was the final asking something to judge. Hope everything is Don't correct. Had a Oh, I think Domagoj um, needs his arrow back for... Um, yeah, it looks like he doesn't have the same uh, knocks on his arrows, probably at some for practice. So the volunteer has to be first. And now Domagoj Buden starts to shoot the second end. And now we have in the gold final two PSC balls. And two times carbon express errors. Yeah. And two times back tension releases, I think. That's a nice shot. Yeah. 10 for Domagoj. And Domagoj shot another 10, so we have 20 points for this end, 49 for Domagoj, and at the moment 40 for Stefan Hansen. And another 10 for Stefan Hansen. But with Stefan, can be that that one point which Domagoj dropped in first time can be the one which deciding if he wins or not. And that another 10 for Domagoj.
That was and a long now. shot. Okay, so now the mother got chance maybe to and get some advantage. So we have 59, 59 and points. 59 points after the first three sets. And three ends to go. I think both of Archers got licensed for European games, which will be next summer. So this season will be interesting because everyone should also start to begin preparation for outdoor quite early because that's quite important event. I'm looking forward to see who is going to win there. Now we're going to start with the third end of our uh, gold medal match. Dumagoy Buden against Stefan Hansen both have 59 points on their scorecard at the moment. Dumagoy starts ten. and shot at 10. Stefan Hansen also shots at 10. Both archers started shooting when they were juniors or even cadets with their international career. And um, Domagoy is in the senior class. It's his first official year as a senior. And that's 20 points for Domagoy and 19 points for Stefan. Perfect score. Another 10, so we have 89 points for Domagoy Buden. And 88 points for Stefan Hansen. <laughs> Stefan shot another 9 in the second arrow. I think he's not happy about it because his average was so high. And when you look at the matches, 148 was his worst match he shot yesterday and today, so I think he's quite not happy. But maybe Domagoy will make a mistake again. We will see. But it's a close match, so one point between Domagoy and Stefan. I just have to correct, it's now um, the third year that Domago shoots international as a senior. And it's the fifth year, I think, for Stefan Hansen. They both know each other also from the junior competitions, from the junior European Championships and junior World Championships. So... We're gonna see who will take the gold medal and who will take the civil medal back home to Croatia or Denmark. Stefan Hansen starts shooting That's with a good, good 10. 10. At the fourth set, we have only one more set to go. It's going to be very difficult for Stefan. Ten. And maybe nine. Nine. It's a nine, so he dropped another point. So Domago is leading by two points at the moment. Ten. And a 10 for Domagoy. He's making strong shots. He's on the flow. He's just doing his shots very concentrated. 
his girlfriend is right in his in his back and coaching him giving yeah, some positive vibes and energy <laughs> yeah i think that might give him some more strength we are not used maybe to see him so often without his dad who was always with him on competition but seems like now it's also really great he's shooting really well with 118 points after four sets and 117 for Stefan. So we just have to wait what the last end will do. Both are good shooters. Both can shoot 30 points. So let's see what the last end will bring for us. This is the final end of the men's movement match. Let's give them a little support. Come on, be loud. There are still many people who want to take a look at the final, so the crowd is pushing the arches and we will see if they can handle it or not. Stefan Hansen starts shooting. Solid 10. Yeah, it will be very difficult for Stefan to get another point to get advantage because Damagoy shot now twice 30. Yeah. And 129 before, which was very, very close to the 10. And another 10 for Stefan Hansen. He seems quite relaxed, Stefan. And I think probably a 9, so wow. the door is open. Maybe we will have a shoot off. It's on Stefan, when he shoot a 10, he gonna have a shoot off or maybe he gonna win the match. Perfect, he shot a perfect score on 30 points, so it's now up oh to Domagoy what he will shoot. He and made a 10 and maybe it's a 10. Looks like it's 10. So we will have a shoot off. Let's make it very, very interesting. Yeah, looks like the second shot Domago had definitely hand during the release a bit too high because he was making the strange movement on the shot. Yeah, but I think Shuto should decide who will get that gold medal, who is the winner here today. We remind that this competition are held in Luxembourg, in Strassen, and hope everyone who didn't come will think maybe to come next year and join this competition. There was really interesting shooting on the morning of second chance as well. There was really high value prizes. Also for archers who are not shooting at a high international level, they get many, ex many experiences. They can shoot with the pros together on one target phase. They have their second chance tournament to win prizes sponsored by Stanislavski. Um, Mikey Sickley. Yeah. So even for the shooters who are not sh shooting such a high scores, they can Go to Luxembourg. Inside out. That's in clearly inside out X, so. Really nice. That's hard for Stefan to beat this. But he and it's, made a ten. it's a 10, but Domagoy is closer to the center. He is very, very happy. He's hiring her girl, his girlfriend. He deserves it. He shot so, so, so strong matches. He. That's really great shoot off. That was a nice shot just inside out. That's not easy. Why? Your 
focused to get so strong for in your match to win it. That's really good shooting. So the new champion of GT Open, 6th edition in 2018, is Damagoi Buden. Congratulations. Hopefully we see you next year again. Also congratulations with the silver medal for Stefan Hansen. He shot also well. Was unfortunately a bit not enough, but shoot off his lottery. You never can predict. We had just prepared for ceremonies. The ceremony will start in a few minutes. Okay, so now we have ceremony between Compound and Recur Finals. You have chance to see again the winners and medalists of GT Open tournament. We had really tight this matches between everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, the victory ceremony for the compound woman. Trophies will be presented by the president of the Luxembourg Trophies will be presented by President of Luxembourg Archery Federation, Mike Beckers. Gifts and checks will be will be presented by President Strassen Archery Club, Jeff Henkels. Third place, it goes to Tanya Jensen. She shot a strong bronze medal match. I think she's very happy because um, I think um, at the qualification she got the fourth place. Shown, so now she's one place better than after the qualification. That's always a good feeling to uh, end a tournament with the better space, uh, place than you started it. She also finished with 9.30, that's good. Victoria Second place is for Victoria Baljanova. Congratulations to her. She also kept herself really well. Representing Slovenia. Congratulations. Toya shot a strong gold medal match. She won 145 points against Victoria Balchanova with 143 points. So she is happy. After qualification, she got the ninth yes, place. Ladies and, and gentlemen, please give a warm round of applause for uh, athletes. We saw some strong matches for, from the compound women and compound men. I think in like five or ten minutes we're going to start with the weaker final part of the day. And we will see some interesting battles. It's um, Sarah Beatles against uh, Aida Roman. 
Ada Roman, she's a strong archer. She shoots many, many years. She is very experienced. She um, shot at the um, Olympic Games last time and I think the time before. Casey Caulfield will shoot for the gold medal match. She did a great job. She shot a new world record in the qualification. She's just a 40 year young archer. But for now, we're gonna start with the compound man prize ceremony. We have the victory ceremony. Trophies will be presented by the president, Luxembourg Archery Federation, Mike Beckers. Gifts and checks will be presented by President Strassen Artery Club, Jeff Henkels. Jeff Henkels is also an international archer, so he knows what the archers need to have a good competition. And um, his volunteers and his club did a great job. Everything works well here. They had food and drinks and enough space for the archers to chill and to shoot and to practice. So the club did a really good job. I think um, next year there will be even more archers. You're going to shoot the first, maybe again, the first leg of the next year's Indoor World Series. We have on our third place, Sergio Pani. On our second place, Stefan Hansen. And on our first place, we have Domagoj Budin from Croatia. First and second place, both are very young archers. And now leading the podium. So they are hard working people. I think Domagoj is very happy because um, after qualification he got the ninth place and now he's first and got some points for the World Cup Finals in Las Vegas. Also Stefan Hansen and um, Sergio Pani got some points for the World Cup Final and I think we will see all three of them in Las Vegas for the Vegas shoot. and for the World Cup in Las Vegas. Just to give you a small preview, the second stage of the World Series will be in Rome, Italy, in December. So this will be the next chance for all our archers to take some points home for the World Cup final and the last change chance for this year because after Rome the next World Cup will be in January in Nîmes, France. And in Rome you can get for the winning the stage 500 points. Here you can get only 250. It's depending of participants of event. And I think Nîmes is 1,000, but I'm not sure. We can participate there also in junior category, in veteran, also you have all categories. And here we can come out and and gold. It's time for the women's recurve bronze medal match. So now we're gonna start with the recurve part, recurve part of the day. We're gonna start with the match Sarah Battles against Aida Roman. Aida is from Mexico and Sarah she's from Great Britain coming to us. 
Sarah is number 80 in the world ranking and Aida she is number 30 in the world ranking. So let's see that can be different that's a record goal. It's a different scoring goal we'll have a set point. And Stefan Hansen will stay behind Aida. I'm sure she's really happy. On time, please welcome Sarah Beckers. Sarah Beckers doesn't have that much experience than Aida Roman. But you know, in the matches, everything can happen. You can be the lucky one who uh, is focused, and it happens so much, so often, that a rookie or a lucky loser comes and win the match because they have nothing to lose. They win in experience, and that's, that means so much. And for Aida, it's more difficult when she loses. That's harder for her than um, for Sarah. Yeah, I think for, I think for sure that higher level archer, more experience will expect more from herself than archer who is new here. But yeah, we, can, we have to see and it's difficult to predict because the boss was quite high by qualification. The Sarah, she was fifth and Aida was sixth with one point different of 578 to 579. So both can shoot high scores, and now we're gonna see who can shoot good matches. Nine. It's a nine for Sarah. And ten, ten. for Aida. It's a perfect X for Sarah. And the nine. nine for Ida Roman. That was a long shot. She can shoot stronger and faster. Yeah, but it's also really close to the ten. And ten. Ten. Sarah, it's 29. That's a good end to begin. And, ten. and a strong shot. Again, a 10, so we have 29 to 29. Now we have the set point system, so um, we don't accumulate all scores. We have set points, so when you win a set, you will get two points when you have, as it is now, um, when both shot the same score, you have one point for each archer, and when you lose, you get no point. Aida Roman made to the round final match with a 578 score in the qualification round, being number six of the qualification. In the quarterfinals, she won against Brian Pittman and lost her semi final against Gabriela Valiano. Sarah Battles shoot a 579. Ranking number five in the qualification round, won her four finals again. Lorena Villar from France. It gets more and, and more people inside of the hall. There is many people come to cheer our Wickham Archer as well. And that's one one for girls. Aida was winning two years ago the edition of Forest GT Open. And Sarah, she seems quite confident, even I think we didn't saw her often on some final field. It's a 10 for her. And Aida Roman shots a 9. It was a strong shot, but I think she wasn't in the center when she releases the string. Uh, 
And in, uh, again a nine for Sarah, so 19 points. With a 10, they have uh, actually tie. And a 10 for Ida, so 1919. We have to wait what the last arrows will bring. And the nine for Sarah, so she opened the door for Aida. When Aida shoots a 10, then she will get two points for the set, and then she will leading three to one point. And it's a 10 for Aida Roman. So, so she got finally advantage after second set. 3-1 for Aida. You need six points to win, so we will definitely see minimum of two sets. So what the, for the World Cup Series, we have um, many tournaments. For the Indoor World Series, we have the GT Open. Macau Indoor next weekend, then we have Rome Archery Trophy in the middle of December. After that, we have the Indoor Archery Open in Seoul at the end of December, right before Christmas Eve. The Seoul was cancelled, so we don't have Seoul. Okay. There was not enough people going there. So then we have, after Roma Trophy, we have Neem in January and for the last tournament we have the Vegas shoot and there will also be the Indoor World Series finals and that's the first option to take some points for the World Cup finals. And we have a 10 for Sarah. Archers have only 20 seconds to release and that can be a problem in case you want to pull back because it's way not enough time to pull back and then make your shot, try to make it again. So that also makes some pressure for some archer who used to be unconfident and difficult to shoot immediately fast their arrows. So we have 1919 at the moment. They're shooting quite straight, quite on the same level with each other now. And a 9 for Sarah. So Aida would need a 10 to win the set. I think it's a 10. So we have 29 points for Aida Roman and 28 points for Sarah Bethels. So Aida will take another two points, two set points, because and now she is leading five to one. We will just need a tie for the next set or two points and Aida Roman wins the bronze medal. Or when Sarah shoots even better than Aida, we will gonna have a shoot off. Aida, she was winning her her sets with only one point advantage in each set where she got points. So that's really small difference. Let's hope she will get the pressure and she will show us nice last end. If not, maybe not last, maybe girls keep going until shoot-off, what would be really interesting. According to new rules of shoot-off in recurve, when they both shoot a 10, they have to shoot. So and now we're going to start with the fourth set.
And that's a nice 10 for Sarah. Sarah shot some strong matches. Um, she won 6 to 0 against Brigitte Langers, 7 to 1 against the woman from Ireland, 6 to 4 against Lorena uh, Villard, and 6 to against, uh, and then she lost uh, 6 to 2 against Casey Cofold. So she shot strong matches and she knows how to win a match. And now she shots two tens. So uh, she gets a pressure high on Ada Roman. For her, it's not easy to win it. Well, it would be enough for her to win the match when she should a tie score. Oh, eight. Uh, and, that's and that's an eight. eight. I think she is not happy with that. Definitely, because now Sarah needs just to hit the yellow, and then she can. Yeah, she got her points for sure. So we have 29 points for Sarah Beatles. And a 10 for Aida Roman. Aida Roman has now 28 points for the set. So Sarah Beatles get another two points. And now we have Three to five. Aida Roman is still leading, but it's getting closer. Also for the next set, Aida Roman just need a tie to win the match, and Sarah Beatles need a win to go for a shoot off. Would be really nice when we will see the shoot off because, yeah, for outdoor we got the new rule which would make it maybe a bit easier for our chances. But you both show the time you can shoot another shoot off. But in indoor nothing changed, and we keep measuring who's closer to the middle, and that makes really high pressure on the archer and. It's really interesting to watch, so... Sarah starts shooting. Sarah need to fight really strong for her every arrow to get an advantage in this set to at least get him to shoot off. If not, Aida need just to tie the points of the set to win her match. And a 10 for Sarah, so 19 definitely, but maybe also 20 points. Yeah, and that's a 10. That's, that's a, ten, a really yeah. nice 10. Now she's into it. Now she can start her match, Aida, I think. I'm sure she is really nervous, but... And it's a 10. So high pressure on Aida. She needs a 10 but Sarah to be sure to win the match. Um, oh, no. that was really nice shot, but probably she was not in with her sight. So looks like we have high possibility to have a shoot off. Let's wait for confirmation of judges. We see the judges have to take a look. And we wait for the sign. It's a tie. It's so a we oh. have a shooter for the bronze medal match, Recurve Women, between Sarah Battles and Aida Roman.
Then we we'll need shoot off. It's a time. I love shoot off. It's really interesting to watch them. Maybe to shoot not so much. <laughs> They're going to change the target faces, that they can measure even better which one, which arrow is closer to the center. Both girls, they look really confident during all match, I think. They both can shoot a good, strong 10. Just have to go into it. Public is supporting both girls. Aida Roman also, um, she already had a shoot off against Bryony Pittman from Great Britain. She shot the better nine. Maybe it will help her to get more focused, but we will see. Sava will start. She has 20 seconds and has to shoot one arrow on the middle target face on the middle spot on our target face. It's very quiet. Oh, that's, that's a nice 10. Nice that's really good. Solid that 10 for really Sarah. For her too, with that one. A lot of pressure on Aida. Keep going. That's, that's a 9. Unfortunately for Aida, she was leading during several sets and unfortunately she lost her shoot off. Sarah shot really, really great 10. So congratulations to Sarah with her bronze medal. She definitely deserved it. She took a revenge for her teammate, Bryony. So I think both are very happy. <laughs> Definitely, they look like. Recurve gold medal match where we will see the cadet 14 year old rising star Cassidy Cassie Caulfield from US and Bayardo Gabriela from Netherlands. That will be very interesting because Cassie she shot cadet world record on this competition. And she also, shortly before, she won her national championships in U.S. in seniors. So she made really good concurrence and pressure now for her U.S. annual teammates. I'm really curious to see this match. And Gabriela, she is from Netherlands, shooting for Netherlands now. She also shot quite good in her qualification On round. She shot 585, she was second. You <laughs> record the 589, she shot on Friday afternoon. Casey, she was first in qualification and with 589, what was her world cadet record. The line judge for this match is Isabel Diaz. The Gabriela, she won her matches in 16 final 6-0. And in 8 final 6-0, then she had a shoot-off. Where, which she, she had two shootouts where she won with a strong 10 against Ring Sara from Germany. And now she, and then she won against Aida Roman 6 4. So now we'll see a strong fight because Cassie, she was shooting also really great and she won her 
all matches with 6-0 except semi-final against Sara Battles which was 6-2. And a strong start. Ten. She knows how to shoot. It's her father as her coach. Yes, it's her father who is coaching her behind. And Mike Schlosser, the boyfriend of Gabriela, coaching her. And they both shoot really, really nice technique. Yeah, and them fast. Yeah, it's... it's I didn't have time to blink when they made already four shots. Yeah. Ten. It's maybe 19 for Cassie and for sure 19 for Gabriella. That was... Nine. She was not happy with that shot, but that's a nine. And it's a ten, ten. for Gabriella, so... At the moment, it looks like we have two points for Gabriella, but we will wait what the judge will say. Maybe we will have a tie, 29-29. The judge checks the arrows. Um, I think he said a nine, but... Okay, now we'll get the confirmation and that's 28 for Cassie. So two points for Gabriela Bayardo. Two years ago, Gabriela shot for Mexico and then she had to um, drop one year because when you um, change the country that you are shooting for, you have to um, wait one year so you can't shoot international tournaments for one year and now she's back in the game starting with the indoor season her first series an indoor and outdoor first time for Netherlands that's a strong back in the game it's really nice results she showed us and it's a perfect 10 almost in X I think for Cassie Also, perfect 10 for Gabriella. That's going to be a strong match. I think they had really good breakfast, the girls. So she's really good today. 19 for Cassie. And it's a 9, or it's a 10 for Gabriella. Okay. It looks like it's like... Were we slightly touching the line? Ten. Okay, 10 for Kesa. 29, that's a good set. And that's that's a definitely a 9. Yeah. nine. But last two shots, I think Gabriella, she was a bit shaking and a bit nervous. So we have a tie, 29-29. And uh, now Gabriella is still leading by two points. Casey Kaufold has one set point. But Casey, she also shooting great technique with really high poundage for her 14 year old. She shooting with 42 pound limbs. That's really much for the both girls are shooting the formula system from Hoyt. Casey starts with a nine. She's shooting Carbon Express arrows, and I think Gabriella shoots Eastern arrows. Gabriella starts with a ten. Ten. For Gabriella, so Casey maybe should try to get her chance now. And, and that's, that's a 10. ten. So Gabriella now have to work for getting a ten if she wants to. 
at nine. So that's three three for girls. It's an interesting match. Oh sure, it will be a very interesting match. They both are really great shooters, but it's really nice that we see such a young archer on the shooting line on the senior competition. That's very impressive. When you're a cadet, normally you shoot on a, a brighter target face. Normally you have 60 centimeters, I think, yeah. at the cadets. And outer you're just shooting 60 meters. And now Casey has to shoot on a 4 centimeters tree spot. And uh, Gabriela is more used to shoot on these. So maybe she's more confident, but Casey is doing a great job. Having a tie, three by three. It's a nine. nine. But Gabriela also shot really well because before when she was still in Mexico, she never shot indoor. So it's basically her beginnings in indoor season. So that's also difficult to get into when you are used to shoot only outdoor. Ten. Strong comeback, a 10 for Casey. So we have 90 points on Casey's side. And 20 points on Gabriella's side. She look a bit nervous. I see her bow shaking a bit. That's an eight. That's an eight. She has to keep her focus. Nine. And a nine. So we have 27 points for Casey Caulfield and 29 points for Gabriela Bayado. Two set points, and she's now leading this match with five to three. So Casey has to win the next set to so stay in the gold medal match. So please give a little bit of support to Casey Caulfield. And that's a fourth and it's a fifth and up to start now. And as we see, Casey has three points, Gabriella has five points. So Casey now needs to get two points to get to a tie and Gabriella just need one point to win the match. And it's a 10 for Gabriella. So t Gabriella is now leading by one point for the set. Ten. Strong 10 for Casey. Eight. That's, That's an eight, eight for Gabriella. So nineteen to eighty points. Maybe That's a strong nine. nine. So we have twenty-eight points. Gabriella needs a ten for to get twenty-eight points, and then they have a tie, and then she would win the match. But when she shoots a nine, she has a second chance at the shoot-off. I think ten. that's ten or nine. The, the spotters say nine, so... It looks like we now have a shoot-off, so both girls are doing a great, great job. The daddy of Casey seems very nervous. He's breathing difficult in the direction of public before. I'm sure girls also know about what they fight for. The Cassidy, it's a young Casey, it's a young archer who is a big potential, but also Gabriella, she's a great archer and she can show us a lot. So so now we're going to start with the shoot off. 
Casey will start and will shoot on the middle spot of our target face. And after that, Gabriella will shoot her shoot off arrow. That's a That's ten. A ten. Really nice. She did it so fast, so confident. That's a nine. So Casey Caulfield made it. She was first in the qualification and win the sixth GT Open Indoor World Series. So she got 250 points for the Indoor World Series of World Archery. Gabriela Bayado, she was second in the qualification and made the second place again. I don't know if she is happy because to lose the last match, you, it's a bittersweet uh, win uh, for the silver medal because you want to get the gold medal. Well, she doesn't smile the Gabriella, but I'm sure she should be also happy with her silver medal. Uh, because it's really great position. At the beginning of season, there is still space to go on, but I'm also really, really happy for Casey because she's so young and she did so well. That's really, really good. I'm really happy for her. And now we're gonna start with the recap man bronze medal match. We're gonna see on target one Rick van der Ven. He is a 27 year old archer on world ranking number 164. And he will shoot again Dong Nam Gu from Korea. Um, normally, when we see someone from Korea, you will see world well, ranking number one to five or something like this at the recap category. But this is like an underdog. Um, he never shot uh, international world archery tournament, but um, he's sponsored by Win and Win, and. Um, he did a great job. He was seventh at the ranking of our event. Rick van der Ven was 12th ranked after the qualification. Uh, Rick shot 578 points and Dong Nam Gu shot 582 points. So five points more than Rick van der Ven. We will now see who will take the bronze medal. It's really interesting because before we had all athletes with a high rank and a lot of experience, maybe except uh, Casey who is still cadet, but it's impressive to have a senior man, the archer from Korea, who we never probably heard, at least most of, the, of us. I'm sure he will shoot. He opened the match with a 10, so... That's a good sign. Yeah. yeah. Ten. Rick answers with a 10, so I think that's, that's going to be probably interesting. It's a 9. 19 points for... And ten. excellent ten from Rick. Yeah, Rick has a lot of experience for sure. Everyone knows him and ten. he's the one who is able to win this competition today. We have 29 from you don't, and we are waiting for third arrow. And, and it's a 30 from Rick. So Rick is leading by one set point, uh, by two set points after the first set. 
And when we take a look at um, the event, Rick van der Ven was qualified 12th and he won um, his first match against Stefan Kraus. The second match, match 6 to 2 against uh, Straja Gasper. And then he won the match against Nuno Carneiro from Portugal with 7 to 3. And then he lost against Steve Weiler, so against someone also from the Netherlands with um, 3 to 7. Um, Dongnam Gu, he um, shot 582 in the qualification, ranked 7. He won against Jonathan Andersen from Sweden with 7 to 3 points. After that, he won 7-1 against Jocelyn de Grandis. Then he won the fourth final against Anthony Wood with also 7-3. Uh, and then he had a shoot-off against Tom Hall from Great Britain. And he lost it with 10-9. And that's a 9 for the Nam. And another 10 for Rick. But in fact, Korean archers are known with very nice technique and he maybe shoots slightly different than some national uh, team archers from Korea, but still he looks quite confident in what he does. So that's, I think, the main. And that's uh, 18 points possibly for Korean athlete and 20 points for Rick from Netherlands. And a solid 10, so, so he is back in the game. It's another 10. So Rick already shot 60 points the whole match and probably has now a four point leading against um, against Dong Nam Gu. We will wait what the judge will say, maybe it's 29 points, but um, Rick will have his four point lead, so it's not that important. Oh, we have two perfect scores. So we have three to one set points for Rick van der Ven. So now he is leading by two set points. But it's getting interested. It's lucky that there was two unsure tens for the Korean athletes and he got them. That's really nice for him. So we have now 3-1 scoring. And ten. he opens it another set with 10. And another 10. Perfect score for Rick van der Ven at the moment. Maybe he will shoot it. Full point would be really good. I think last year there was some archer who shot. Maybe Patrick Houston. We should check that one later. So 19 points for Dong Nam Gu. And another 10 for Rick van der Ven. And I think it's a 10, so 29 points. Rick needs a 10 for another two set points. Oh yes, he did it again, another 10. So he got 90 points. And I tell you, that's not easy when you are a recurve archer to shoot a full score. Yeah, even they have a bigger 10, that's definitely not easy, but 
He's really high level archer, so we can expect from him this. Yeah. Rick also was a participant at the Olympic Games. I think um, he was there um, 2014, but he is still on the high level. He is in the national team of the Netherlands, shoot the Outdoor World Cup Series and European uh, World Championships. Gul Dongnam will start and now we see Rick van der Ven is leading by four points, so he just needs a tie to win the yeah, four point leading, so five to one. And he just needs a tie to win the bronze medal. Gu opens the fourth set with a ten. Well, Rick should just keep going on like he did before. And it's another ten. <laughs> Really, really inside out. It's really nice. Impressive shooting from him. He's dropping any point until the fourth set. I hope he can keep it on till the end, till he wins his match. And again, another 10. One arrow and he... Get it, he will get the full point. And a 10, so now Rick needs a 10 to win the match and get one set point, and he did it. Unbelievable, a full score. He did it. So he gave uh, our Korean guy no chance to win this match. But he also shot so easy his arrows, unbelievable. It's full point 89 for Rick Wonderman with such an easy shooting. It felt like he would shoot on five meters. Really nice. Yeah. Congratulations to the Rick and also a silver medal for the Judo Nam. Yeah, Rick had a good technique and that's difficult. When you have a full score, the last arrow, it's not against your competitor, the other one, it's against yourself because now you have pressure on yourself. You want to shoot a 10 and he needed it and he did it. So that's what makes an internet archer. You have to shoot on point when you need it and he did it. Now we will get another match where we will see the Steve Wiesler against Tom Hall. So another archer from Netherlands against archer from Great Britain. Steve Weiler was first in the qualification. Um, he is 22 years old and ranked second at the, at the world ranking. He shot 594 points, uh, shot strong matches and won his last match with 7-3 uh, against Rick van der Ven. We saw Rick van der Ven just a few seconds ago. And um, he will, uh, Steve Waller will shoot again Tom Hall from GBR. He shot 584 points at the, his qualification and ranked six. He won against um, a guy from France, six to four. Um, Juno Wildhag from the Netherlands, six to two. Patrick Houston, also from GBR, six to four. And he won against Gu Dong Nam, who we saw him a minute ago. And he won the shoot-off against Dong Nam Gu. So I think that's going to be a um, um, good match. Both archers are um, in the national teams for their countries. Both know how to shoot international tournaments, how to shoot strong matches. And um, 
I think they can put some pressure on the other archer. Steve Weiler, he um, started just a few years ago with his international career, but um, he started, I think, at the World Cup in Shanghai and directly won the World Cup. So this guy knows how to focus on his shooting and how to put the arrow in the ten. Steve Weiler will start shooting. Steve Weiler has the same coach that Rick van der Ven just uh, had at the last match. So maybe the coach will bring Steve Weiler the, the luck he needed to win the match. So Rick starts shooting the match. Oh, that was uh, uh, Steve Wilder sh started. He shot a 10. Not the best technique, but it's still a 10. And Tom Hall shot a 9. Maybe ten. Nine, probably a ten. Nine. That's a nine. So nineteen to eighty points for Steve Weiler. And maybe also a liner, but I think it's a ten, so twenty nine points for Steve Weiler. Possibly thirty. Let's wait for the decision of the judge. And that's a bit long shot by Tom. That's a nine. Steve Waller will definitely get the two set points. Maybe um, they will upgrade his arrow to a ten, or the judge decides that's a nine. We will see what the judge will say. It's a nine. So twenty nine to twenty seven, and Steve Weiler got six, uh, two set points and he's now leading. Tom Hall is 28 years old. He is um, on the 67th world rank. And he will start the second set. It's a nice, nice start from Tom. Let's see what the answer is from Steve. Yeah. Ten. ten, but surprise, his hand was falling very fast down. I guess he was not in the middle with his side. That's a long shot. But it's quite a ten, so t 20 points for Tom Hall. Ten. And another ten, 10 for Steve Weiler. Steve Weiler shoots the formula system from Hoyt. Um, I think with Eastern Arrows and um, Tom, he's shooting, um, I think it's Fivix, Riser and Limbs. So two, two times a perfect score, we have 30 points and 30 points, so we have a tie for this set, but Steve Weiler is still leading the match by two points. 
Fat looks like Tom turned on now a bit and got into the 10 three times. That's really good. After 27, that's what Archer need to do. It's good. Yeah, as we said before, sometimes you just need the first end to uh, to get into it, to um, get used to the um, people who are looking at the, you, the cameras, the lightning. In set points, it's also not so important to shoot every sh every set perfect, but as long as you win your set, even. There was people who won the match with the miss in some set. It's anyway, you start always from zero, and the summary doesn't count, so it's good. It's a 10. And the 10. He was very happy with his shot now, how he shaked his head. At 20 points for Tom and 20 points for Steve. Maybe we'll see another perfect score. And 9 for Tom, 29, that's also good set. So Steve now needs a 10 to get two set points or a 9 for a tie and then both will get one set point. That's a 10. So we have another 30 points for Steve Weiler. He will get two set points and now Steve Weiler has five set points, Tom Hall one. So, if Tom Hall wants to win the match, he needs to shoot even more tens and needs four points, four set points to go for a shoot-off. And Steve Weiler just need a tie to win the gold medal match and win the sixth edition of the GT Open and the first stage of Indoor World Series. That's a four set for archers. It can be the decideful set, the fifth, five points, so Steve would need to win that set or to have a tie, it would be also enough to win the match. It's a nine for Tom. And it's a 10 for Steve, but when you look at his shots, I think he is not all the time in the middle of his target face. But uh, at the end, it just counts not how you shoot. It matters where you're going to hit the target face. So. Well, maybe he's a bit nervous, so his point doesn't stay so good in the middle. Now it was actually a nice shot. So he made two tens and two nights for Tom. Ten. And a 10 for Tom, so Steve just needs an 8 for a tie, then he will win, or a 9, and then he will get two set points and win 7 to 1, and it's a 10. So another 30 points for Steve Weiler, and this is our new champion of the 6th edition of the GT Open. He wins his gold medal match with seven points against Tom Hall with one point. Congratulations to Steve Wiesler. He did a nice three sets in a row. 30, 30, 30. It's really nice. 
Also, congratulations to the Tom with the silver medal. They did a good job. Steve Wallow was first in the qualification, so I think he's very happy that he now got another time, the first place in the medal match. And in a few seconds, we're gonna start with our award ceremony. At first, we're gonna um, have the ceremony for the recurve women, and after that, we will have the award ceremony for the recurve men. start with the victory ceremony for the Rika women. And we see for the prize ceremony that gifts, gifts will be and checks will be presented by President Luxembourg Archer Federation Mike Beckers and trophies will be presented by Mayor Commune Strasse Gaston Green Weldinger. So third place is for Sarah Battles. She had a strong match, I think she is very happy for that. She is from GBR. Another Archer from England on the podium. Gabriela. Gabriela and um, Casey Kaufel, they had a shoot-off in their gold medal match. Gabriela shot a nine and Casey a ten. And congratulations to the winner, to Casey Kaufold from US. She showed us really high level shooting. And she just did not win the gold medal, she also had a new world record. Yeah, she was first in qualification run, first in elimination run, and she go home also with a World Cadet record on 18 meters in qualification. She had really great weekend here. I think that was a very good tournament for her. Definitely, yes. It was and worth it to go to Europe. Yeah, I think she said she will go also on the other stages, so I guess we will still see her often this season if she keeps going so strong. And as a quick reminder, the GT Open is the first leg of the Indoor World Series. Next weekend we have the next um, stage in Macau in China. After that we will have the third Indoor World Series in Rome, Italy, and then we will see you in 2019 back again in Nîmes, France for the fourth stage and then 
the last stage where also the World Indoor Series finals will be held is in Las Vegas, USA. So keep yourself updated and uh, watch the finals in uh, Macau next weekend on our YouTube channel. And now we're going to start with the award ceremony for the Recurve Man. Trophies will be presented by Mayor Commune Strasse and Gaston Greiveldinger. Gifts and checks will be presented by President Luxembourg Archery Federation Mike Beckers. We see on the third, third place Rick van der Ven from the Netherlands. He did an awesome job. He shot a full score on his bronze medal match against um, our Korean guy. So I think he's quite happy. That's the best way to, to end the tournament. You have yourself confident, very high, and I think we will see him at some other stages of our Indo World Series. On the second place, there is Tong Ho from Great Britain. He was sixth in the qualification, so he can be very happy with his second place now. And the third guy, the second guy from Netherlands, on the first place. is Steve Weiler. He also did a great job. He just shot one nine, but after his first set with 29 points, he shot a perfect um, 90 points. So he also can be very happy and collected some points for the Indoor World Series finals in Vegas next year. But this season started definitely very interesting with really nice results from archers. I say this indoor season will be full of nice results and nice achievements of different athletes around the world. On the recurve man podium we see today Euro all European archers and but also it's really great to see on record podium from all the world around archers from US from Europe and we have and high quality we saw high quality archery and I think uh, we will see also some good matches next weekend and um, we will see who will get enough points to uh, get to the World Cup Finals. And um, the organizers here in Luxembourg, they did a great job. Everything worked well and hopefully there are more archers next year because there is still some place. And um, be prepared, get your place next year. And we want to thank all the sponsors. So thanks to you for your attention. Hope everyone liked to watch with us the first stage of World Indoor Series in Luxembourg on GT Open 6th edition. And keep following the result of archers who will come into the Vegas finals. And good luck. Everybody could just